Um, there has been a lot of talk in the markets amongst economists about the potential for another recession. You guys have actually upgraded your estimates of economic growth. Why? Uh, so, yes, we, we slightly upgraded our estimate of growth as compared to the forecast we made at the beginning of this year. And that was based on data showing pretty strong uh, spending, especially by consumers. At the same time, we see risks in the economy. And our forecast has growth slowing in the second half of the year. Consumer spending, we expect that to subside a little bit in terms of its uh, growth. And then business investment as well. And in a sense, that's the, the main risk to, uh, to the outlook right now is, is business investment. So in the current economic environment, under our current fiscal policy, you don't see the possibility of recession. Uh, so we don't have a recession at any particular point in our forecast. We recognize there's a chance of a recession. A at the same time, there's a possibility that growth will be stronger than we forecast as well. You mentioned that uh, business investment has been particularly weak and potentially worrisome. One of the things that you mentioned in your report is that tariffs are weighing on uh, businesses, increasing uncertainty. Talk about how you guys see tariffs impacting the economy. Uh, yes, of course. So we, we have a, a two-page box in the report that uh, was published today on, on exactly that, the effect of tariffs on the economy. Um, we, we see the direct effects affecting American families and businesses, that tariffs raise the prices they pay and, in, in effect, decrease their purchasing power. And then looking forward, we see the effect of uncertainty, that those businesses are uncertain about future trade policies, and that appears to be dampening business investment. Director Swagel, I believe that Morgan has a question for you back at... Uh uh, the NICE? Uh, sure. Hi. Hi, D Director Swagel. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, in this report, interest rates, 10-year Treasury at an average of 2.9 percent over the decade. I, I mean, right now, the 10-year yield is at about 1.5 percent. Right now, we have increased talk that you could potentially see negative interest rates. Have you factored in what that would, that would look like if interest rates continue to drop in this country and what that means for the budget deficit? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so we see some effect of lower interest rates in, in our uh, projections right? as compared to where we had interest rates at the beginning of the year in the last uh, update from CBO. Right? We have long term interest rates um, about 60 basis points lower than before. And that has a pretty big impact on the deficit projection. Now, it doesn't entirely offset the increased spending uh, as a result of the, the bipartisan budget act, but it, it does have an effect if, as you said, interest rates went yet lower. Well, there'd be offsetting effects, right? One is the direct effect of, of uh, lower interest payments for the federal government. Uh, of course, if interest rates were lower, we have to look at the economy and say, well, why are they lower? Probably growth would be slower than we project. And that, of course, would have effects on, on the deficit as well. And why do you think that uh, the tenure is going to be so much lower than you previously forecast? Are you guys also looking at additional Fed rate cuts? Is it just because of a slowing economy? Is it some combination of both? Uh, so it, it's a mix, right? We, we certainly took on board the, the Fed uh, rate cut uh, earlier this summer. Um, and then we looked at markets and we said, you know, we have a pretty conventional view of the effect of interest rates, uh, the effect of budget deficits on interest rates in the future. So the fiscal situation is it's challenging. I think that's a polite way of putting it. And over the long term, that, that will feed into higher interest rates. In the near term, market participants are, are clearly speaking that they don't see the effect of those deficits on interest rates. And we took that on board in our forecast. And John has a question for you also. Hi, Director. I uh, can't help but notice 20 years ago when we had a sustained period of economic strength, uh, the U.S. was running a surplus. Now we've had this period of economic strength still running deficits and you're uh, projecting that the total deficit is going to continue to grow. What's the impact then when we eventually do hit a recession, how do you expect that to affect the debt and policy? Uh, no. Um, well, of, of course, CBO doesn't make policy recommendations, right? We provide analysis to support the Congress. Um, so I, I can't say what the policy will be, but I can talk about the effect on the economy on, on deficits. Um, if the economy were, go, were to go into recession, and again, we, we don't have that at any point in our forecast, um, we see the chance of it. But if it were to happen, that would mean lower, uh, lower revenues um, and higher spending. Um, right, there's lots of spending that uh, depends on the state of the economy, the safety net spending. Um, and of course, there could be policy action that the Congress would take in that, uh, you know, in that eventuality. So there certainly would be an impact. Um, 
you know, look, right now interest rates are, are low and the Treasury is uh, financing itself at pretty low interest rates. So it doesn't seem to be a, a concern of markets right now. One of the reasons that uh, folks have pointed to for lower than expected revenues this year is that perhaps the recently enacted tax law is having larger than expected impact on revenue. Can you talk a little bit about what you've been seeing and uh, how that's playing out? Uh, so we've, we've seen different effects that, um, on, on the corporate side. Corporate revenues have been a, a, a bit weaker than um, we expected. It's hard to parcel out how much is the result of the uh, 2017 Tax Act and how much is, is other effects. Um, uh, the changes in the, in the data suggest that some of the revenues that might have been coming from the corporate tax are now showing up on the individual side. Essentially, pass-through businesses are, are uh, gaining the income rather than corporates. So that's part of it. Um, uh, and that's, that, that's sort of the, the sorts of things we're trying to figure out and what's going on with revenues. And final question for you. Do you think that there is any appetite on Capitol Hill for addressing what you politely called the challenging fiscal <laughs> picture? Or do you think we're in an environment where folks are going to be pursuing either tax cuts or major new spending programs? Uh, so, of course, this is the part where, it, you know, the role of the CBO is to support the Congress. Whatever the Congress um, looks to do, we will support them. We will provide the cost estimates. We will provide any analysis that, that's helpful for them. But, but also a warning that the picture could be dire. Absolutely. But they're not going to be hearing policy recommendations from me. We're here to support them.